Okay, today we're going to be talking about is it your season? And our scripture reference is Mark 11, 12 through 14 that was read previously from the New King James Version. I'm going to read it to you from the Amplified Version. And we're just going to talk for just a few minutes on it this morning. Mark 11, 12, 13 through 14. Let's start with a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to come into your very presence. And we thank you, Lord, for your word that is true. Lord, we pray today that you would begin to reveal to us more and more, Lord, about your purpose in our life and in this church. And we commit ourselves to you, Lord God. We commit ourselves to the season that you have before us as a church. And we just pray that you would have your way with us, Lord, as a church, and that you would have your way with us today in this service. We commit ourselves to you and to your word, and we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Mark 11, 12, 13, and 14, and reads as follows. On the day following, when they had come away from Bethany, he was hungry, Jesus. And seeing in the distance a fig tree covered with leaves, he went to see if he could find any fruit on it. For in the fig tree, the fruit appears at the same time as the leaves. But when he came up to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the fig season had not yet come. And he said to it, no one ever again shall eat fruit from you. And his disciples were listening to what he said. The interesting thing here is in the King James, it says that Jesus cursed the fig tree. And so that word might be a little strong, but it still has a point that he was trying to make. We see this unusual situation with Jesus cursing or dooming, the same interpretation in the Greek, cursing or dooming the fig tree. Now we can understand what that happened when something or someone deserves that kind of judgment, but let's look at the fig tree for a minute. It didn't deserve to be doomed or cursed because, first of all, it wasn't a season for figs. Yes. Amen. It wasn't totally barren or not producing, just not producing figs. Mm -hmm. It appeared to be a healthy tree because this is what Jesus looked at. It said he came up to it expecting to get some fruit from it. Yes. So in the, in the idea of the fig tree today, just imagine if you were the fig tree. Y'all ever heard the phrase, if you, if you do good, you get good, and if you do bad, you get bad? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so why was it cursed to do it? It not that bad. Had it. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Now y'all got an extra hour of sleep, or did y'all stay up late? <laughs> did y'all get an extra hour of sleep last night? <laughs> y'all stay up late, y'all got an extra hour of sleep late? That's what y'all did. Okay, now we back up again, because we back on the time, right time again. So, all right, so let's see what happened next. We'll go a little further to this scripture. Mark eleven fifteen says this. It says they came to Jerusalem, and he went into the temple, the area of the porches and court, and began to drive out those who sold and bought in the temple area. And he overturned the four footed tables of the money changers and the seats of those who dealt in doves. And he would not permit anyone to carry any household equipment through the temple enclosure, thus making the temple area a shortcut for traffic lane. And he taught and said to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have turned it into a den of robbers? And the chief priests and the scribes heard this and kept seeking some way to destroy him, for they feared him, because the entire multitude was struck with astonishment at his teaching. And when the evening came on, he and his disciples, as a custom, went out of the city. So look at this. Jesus, first of all, we just saw Jesus pass into the city, wanted something to eat, doesn't eat. He cursed the fig tree. He gets to the temple, uh -huh. and the money changes, and then the king thinks that the money changes, that's selling, yeah. and making money out of profits and things, mm -hmm. in the temple. Mm -hmm. And he came in. Now you know God is love. And he's kind and he's generous. So he came in with his kind of himself and turned over my table and ran about, told them, <laughs> wait a minute now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I, hold on, dude. I thought if fault was love, what's going on with this? God is love. First he cursed, cursed the fig tree. Now he turned over money tables in the temple. What's wrong? Are you having a bad day, Jesus? Are you in a bad mood? What's wrong? 
Or maybe he was a little angry, but I don't think so. Sometimes when you're going through things, and it's not just seeing, sometimes things happen and you don't understand what's happening. So you, we always have that question, that question that God never answers. Y'all know a question that God never answers? Why? Why is it happening? Why me, Lord? I ain't did nothing wrong. I'm trying to serve you. I'm doing the best I can. What's wrong? Why me? Oh, God, why me? Why me? Yeah. Well, how about this? The baptism of God never put more you than you can handle. Yeah, if you didn't think you can handle it, he wouldn't let it go come past you. He wouldn't let it come to you. Amen? Yeah. And you don't really ask that. I've never heard God answer that question, why? If you had him talk to me at the church and tell me how he answers your question, why? Because he ain't never told me why. Mm. So let's go back to the fig tree for a minute. Can you imagine if that fig tree could talk? What did I do? Why this happened to me? Yeah. <laughs> it didn't even a season for me. Sam for me? Yeah. Just me. I'm the only one. No. Y'all still sleep? No. no. Mike Pell, you sleep? Okay, Mike. All right, no, Mike, I'm going to go ahead and go. Rest y'all been in church so long. Y'all don't need that there. Mike, he, he hung. I'm going to go feed Mike. <laughs> why is this happening? You've got to understand. Why is it? And he don't explain why it happens. But we're going to see what happens with it in a little while. So Jesus. He's, he, he looks at Peter, and this, this is what, well, before, before I explain, let's go a little bit further to the scripture. Mark 11, 20. It says, in the morning when they were passing along, they noticed that the fig tree was withered completely away to its roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, Master, look, the fig tree which you doomed has withered away. And Jesus replied, said to them, have faith in God constantly. Still not answering why, what happened to the victory happened. But he said this, he says, truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him. For this reason I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. So what's the answer to that question? Well, Peter didn't really ask the question. He said, look, the fig tree, you curse is with it. It's dead. And Jesus gives them scripture about what they're saying. He said, have faith in God. Yeah. Constantly, to emphasize this, have faith in God constantly. Because we have faith in God, then we also have to say, oh, we'll try to, okay, well, God ain't doing well, I'm going to fix this myself then. I'm going to make it out. Yeah. And then we get worse trouble, don't we? Yeah. Amen. But Jesus said, have faith in God constantly. So when things change, Remember what he said for you to receive and wait. Because he says this, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt at all his heart, but believes what he says will take place, it will be done for him. Now I heard a story, I don't know all the details of it, a friend of mine might have told me this in North Carolina, there was a lady who had a house in North, this is in the mountains part of North Carolina, but these mountains, Apparently, with bothering her, then the sun, she wanted to get the sunshine from her son. And she took the scripture. She said, Well, says this mountain, be lifted up down to the sea, and don't let it be done for her. So she prayed, Lord, move that mountain out of the way. And she prayed for years, so that mountain be moved. And one day, the governor came in, because they built a new highway through there, and moved the mountain out, and built the highway. The mountain moved. <laughs> <laughs> I should have found the, the details of that. I said that. I said, now, 
Now, I'm sure she had came here that morning and told me that. I said, now, sister, look, I know you want some sunshine to happen. You don't need to be praying for that mountain to be moved. But God says, if you say to this mountain, be moved, yeah. it'll be moved. Now, he wasn't necessarily talking about a literal mountain, yeah. but in this case, it was a literal mountain. So if he did it for her in a literal mountain, right. guess what your problems are? Yes, sir. No problem for him at all. No right. He said, whatever you ask for in prayer, Believe, trust, and be confident yes, that it's granted to you, and you will get it. Yes, now, what did he not say? Y'all heard me say this a million times. What did he not say? Uh, when. Thank you. I know my wife would get it. I was hoping somebody else would say it. He didn't say when. Yeah. He didn't say right then. Yeah. He says you will get it. Yeah. So if you haven't got it, hang on. Thank you, brother. See, so you getting older and wiser every day. <laughs> Jesus never answered them why the tree was cursed. Yeah. But he explained the purpose to teach us about authority. Yes, amen. So Jesus could take one fig tree and sacrifice it so that he could teach 12 men about authority. Amen. The fig tree has served its purpose. What is your purpose? Because you might be going through something. It might not even be about you. Right. It might be about somebody that's watching you. Right. Yeah. And when they see you go through it, and they're affected, and then they go reach a hundred other people you don't know, yeah. it may have served a purpose. Now, I ain't saying God put sickness on nobody to make them more spiritual and like that. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the trouble we have to go through. In the world, Jesus said, you're going to have trouble and tribulation. But then he said, but be of good cheer. I will come to the world. So if one fig tree can produce 12 world changers, even though one fell off and he had to replace it, then it was worth the fig tree being cursed. Yeah. God don't necessarily explain why he do stuff, but we trust him enough to know that whatever it is that we're going through, has a purpose right. yeah. further down the road. So Jesus, in 11, 22 says this, Jesus replied, said to them, have faith in God constantly. Truly I tell you, Mark 11, 23, whoever says, you just say, he does it. I can't move no mountain. That lady couldn't move no mountain from outside her house. Mm. But whoever says, yeah. says what? What do you need to, what do you need to have? Mm -hmm. Whatever you say, line up with his will. If you say it and believe in your heart and don't doubt at all that what you say will take place, it will be done for you. And God will do it because he's faithful. Sometimes we go through things. Everybody goes through things. Whether they say it or I say it. Everybody has some of the same troubles. Sometimes the trouble ain't cause you say it. It's because you just in an area where there's trouble. But sometimes we go through trouble because we're persecuted for what we believe. People don't agree with us about something. They don't want no Christians on their job. They don't want no Christians talking to them. They don't want no Christians. You know, you're persecuted just because you're a saint, because you're a Christian. That's just, that goes with the term. Yeah. If you used to hang out with them, and now you ain't hanging out with them no more, oh, who do you think you is now? You're going to church. Yeah. Oh, you think you're holy now, huh? And that's just the enemy. But when we know the truth, we can say, yeah, it's not because I'm holy, it's because I, 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 I have understood now what the grace of God is all about. No, I ain't perfect. But guess what? I'm working on it. Yeah. Because his grace redeems us, brings us into the right place with him where he can speak to us and disciple us and train us. And it takes a while. Yeah. Sometimes people have immediate change, things work faster. Some people, Takes a long time. Some things 
I remember one time, I don't remember exactly what it was, and I kind of half remember this, so forgive me. I, I did turn 66 this year. But I remember one time telling somebody about something I had finally got worked out between me and the Lord. Oh, man, that the first week I got saved. As, as if, <laughs> what took you so long? Well, for one thing, I ain't trying to earn nothing. That's right. I'm still learning. Yeah. Some people learn faster than others, right? Yeah. But as long as you learn it, and guess what? Even when you get to heaven, you think, see, sometimes people think when we get to heaven, we're just going to be like that. We're just going to be playing the hearts, and we're just going to be kind of like floating along. But there's still teaching going on in heaven. Yeah. There's stuff we don't, learn, we don't know now that when we get to heaven, we're going to learn about. Yeah. We're going to always be learning. Yeah. Heaven would be actually boring forever if all we did was nothing but be at peace, laying on a raft floating around. At least it'd be boring for me. Some people like that kind of stuff. I don't know. Uh, I might have learned how to swim if I was floating around on the raft, even in heaven. Uh, I'm gonna say that. My wife said, no, okay, honey. I'm sorry. What am I saying wrong? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Some people's idea of peace and other people's idea of peace are two different things. Everybody got a different uh, idea of what heaven's gonna be like. Some people think, man, I've been so broke and poor down here on earth. When I get to heaven, I'm gonna have me a mansion. And you are. But you ain't gonna, what would you, you ain't gonna have no money? What you need money for up there? Everything's provided. Yeah. Money's a thing down here. So our reason for going to heaven, first of all, is that we ain't separated from God no more. We ain't burning that lake of fire. That's the only reason I need right there. Amen. I know, right? I know. All everything else is when they say gravy. Yeah. <laughs> but we can always receive God's best. Even here Amen. on earth, a lot of people put the best off to heaven. Well, I want to get to heaven, then that's what I'll do. I heard Christ say it one time in the song. He said, if heaven was never promised to me, it's been worth it all because of what the Lord has done for me on this side. And she said, even if I don't go to heaven, he's been so good to me on this side that it's been worth it all. Just serve the Lord yeah. and follow him. But guess what? Even as good as it is here, it's better there. Yeah. I hear people talking about it all the time, like, uh, how are you doing today? Well, I woke up on this side of the dirt. I'm like, you did? That, that's it? Like, you going to a worse place? I remember when my father-in-law was passing away. One, one time, one morning, he, woke, he said, I'm still here. He's like, I'm ready to go. Which was surprising to us, because, you know, we had put him in the Catholic category, you know. And guess what? He's there, in heaven. My yeah. wife had a dream about it. Amen. See, we categorize people. Okay. Well, you're not Baptist, you ain't Methodist, you ain't Pentecostal, you, ain't, you don't do this, you don't do that. You ain't really, all of you say it's not. <laughs> and I don't need to explain, I don't see no new faith. I don't need to explain nobody here how to get saved, but we already know how to get saved now. We know we can get saved by looking at Jesus, Believing on him, trusting him, and then we get discipled. Now, the discipling part is, is the challenge, because we all need to be, myself included, continue to grow, continue to learn what he wants us to do. But that ain't, that ain't increasing our chances to go to heaven. That's increasing our effectiveness on earth, because he said to be holy, even as I am holy, because we represent him. So people look at us and go, well, you ain't holy. Then they say, you ain't no Christian. Well, that's not true. I am a Christian. Yeah. I'm just still learning. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still growing. Yeah. But we can't use that fact that he extended his grace to us as an excuse to just do what we want to. Paul says, should I go on sin that grace me about? Yes. May it never be. Yeah. No, we don't sin so we get more grace. Even though we do get more grace when we sin. He says that when you, when you sin, grace abounds and super abounds. That's way more grace than you could ever sin. Right. But that don't mean you say, oh, well, good, I don't want more grace. I'm going to sin some more. That's like enjoying going to the hospital or something. I don't know. I've been to the hospital. I'm going to go out and get hit by a car and go back to the hospital because they wait on me hand and foot and down and bring me. What do you mean? That's not something ridiculous with me. Yeah. But why we do God like that? Because he gives us his grace. I'm going to sin some more so he can give me more grace. No. no. His grace empowers us to be a disciple and to live his life. And so this power he gives us 
It's the example that Jesus used here with his, with his disciples. The fig tree was just an instrument that he needed to use to show them a very simple result. And that's what he tells you. Jesus said, when, Jesus, when Peter passed back by the tree, he said, Lord, look, the fig tree you cursed or doomed has withered away. Yeah. And he didn't even address the tree. He still addressed them. He said, have faith in God. Yeah. Truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and believes in his heart, he'll have what he says. Yeah. You say, well, even if I, what if I say it and I don't really believe it? Well, say it till you believe it. <laughs> but you got to say it. Yeah. You can believe it and never say it and that will happen. Because see, the power is in you saying something. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to say it. Yeah. But if you don't believe it, keep saying it till you believe it. Yeah. Yeah. And then one day, it will happen. It might happen right then. That's right. Amen. It's not always off the distance. You don't wait for, well, okay, it'll happen off in the distance. Mm -hmm. That happened here. I, I believe that Brother Dennis, because I remember when I first came here, and the parsons was for sale over here. And I, you know, I said, okay, we're praying for the parsons for sale. I didn't think nothing about it. That afternoon, he called me. Pastor, we got an offer on the parsons. Same day. Praise God. I remember turning and talking to it. I don't know how y'all remember it or not. And telling it to sell in the name of Jesus. It sold the same day. Yeah. Now that won't happen all the time. It did. I have to turn into some other stuff out here. Right. <laughs> See, that's the problem. We don't take believing if we think we're in control. But we got to trust God. That's right. We can to lead the results to him. And we can. And so when we say to the mountain or to our circumstances or to whatever we're going through, be removed and cast into the sea. Oh Lord, let this blessing come upon me. And if you really don't see him telling us to pray for blessings to come upon us, we, when we minister to other people and give to them, he says, give and it'll be given to you. He always says that, that the first part is for you to do this for somebody else, and then things will happen for you. But when you just when you look for yourself and we focus on ourselves, that's not the way that's not the way God works. Our focus is always to other people. And then God take care of us. And if somebody do you wrong, don't worry about it. Shake the dust off your feet. Keep on moving. God will take care of it. I promise you that. He will. So Jesus said, and we're close. Have faith in God constantly, the Amplified said. Constantly. Not one time, but continue. Repeat. Whatever your act of faith is, keep repeating it. Have faith in God constantly. If your act of faith is speaking it, if your act of faith is doing, going to something, to do something, do that act constantly, and then say whatever you want to happen, and it will happen. Amen. 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 This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. We pray that blessed upon this word, Lord, may it find good soil in the, in the ears of the hearers today. And Lord, help us to know that you will lead and guide us in what we should believe for and trust you for. And we thank you, Lord, that we can say and receive. So Lord, we do say today, your blessing be upon Wesley Chapel Church and your people. And upon them, Father, I pray your blessing upon them. Lead and guide them into the things that you have for them. And I pray that you would give them those things, Lord. <coughs> in the name of Jesus, we pray.